How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing? Last week was really one of the worst weeks of all time. <laughs> uh, understatement, but we lost a family friend, uh, Daniel Klein. Um, I want to say condolences to his family again for the loss and uh, a lot of others as well. And then they had the riot at the Capitol, the Capitol building. So a lot of the things happened. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about the word. We're gonna discuss the word today. We're gonna get more in about the, the life stuff that happened last week. So man shall not live by bread alone, but I have a game. I have it's food on the grill. So we're gonna talk about today the contrast between Matthew and John. So here's the contrast. Contrast is this. You know how John is is very very spiritual. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. You see, those types of things, high spirituality, you know, that's John. You know, he, he's really, I wanted, wanted to just say that he was closer to God. We're saying that Matthew, because Matthew was a tax collector in the middle of the story, or the middle of the beginning of the story, meeting Jesus. That was a tax collector. He wasn't really with him in the beginning, like John was. So John, we're looking at that that closeness there. It's really revealing all the relationships with the apostles and things like that. Matthew is more on the law side, what you can do, what you should do to get in heaven. But John would tell you that is the doctrinal gospel. The other three, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I think I'll, I'll share Luke sometime later today, but uh, the movie version. But again, I know one, one of some of you might be saying, why, why is, why is uh, Jesus black? You know what? I mean, why isn't Jesus black, or why isn't Jesus, you know, uh, Middle Eastern, or, or or just have the olive color? Of course, you were saying why is he played by Caucasian actors? I know da -da -da. Why is he have an American accent? Da -da -da -da, in in the Matthew one, but I want to tell you this: if you are to drink from Christ Jesus Yeshua's mouth, if you drink from his mouth, you're going to become him. Now, I'm not talking about some scenario where you say, you know, you're the Messiah. No. Once you say the words that he spoke and you mean them, he, he'll basically become, he'll, he'll become you. But but it's a, it's another spiritual thing. You have to learn about the all other things like that. But the Holy Spirit is the link of the divinity of the Trinity. That is the connection between the Father, the Son, and you. The Holy Spirit being inside of you, living inside of you. Living inside of your mind, living inside of your body, entire essence. So this is the temple of God, owned by God. So that is the Holy Spirit. So that component is also something you would need to truly understand some of what's being said parable-wise. Because 90%, 70%, 70-90% is in parable. Because it's trying to make it a little bit harder to repent. But Matthew... It's one of those things where it's very clearly stated what will happen in the future between angels and blah, 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 blah. But it's nothing that really resonates to a lot of people because, again, parables. So everything you heard in Matthew might not actually be what you heard in Matthew because a lot of other things. But it's explained in Matthew why it might be hard to understand. So the point is this. The difference between Matthew and John, going back to it is the fact that Matthew, the tax collector, he understood a lot of the Jewish law. And so did John, of course, but, well, it was a, a plaint, man, but, but the idea was with the spirit of the living God. The, the distinction of Matthew and John is this. A lot of what's detailed in Matthew is showing you the when and where. John is telling you the how and why in the beginning. When you start with things like in the beginning, you know you're in for a good book. John, is 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 the is the scripture where you're saying, or well, people will attack John more than, before they attack Matthew because John is like the spectacle. It's unbelievable. It's it's something that can never be understood. But when you understand who the living word is, what the living word is, how the living word is, once you understand those things, you understand the gospel of John. So the difference of the components you find in Matthew, he says, "Love thy neighbor as thyself." Again, in John, he would say. Uh, to love people or, or love your, your neighbor really to love others as the lamb has loved you so combining those two you're going to say 
The commandment is this. For to love others as the Lamb has loved you and as you shall love yourself. As you shall love yourself. Because a lot of people, again, you know, we love ourselves. Sometimes it's a bad, like, it's a negative egotistical type of thing. We, we probably, you know, that's the thing with the love is the fact that, you know, it's patient, caring, love is patient caring love is kind love is felt most when it's gen you want I, I might share that song but when i think about the story okay so we're going back to square one the square one is to say love is the most basic principle of the commandments what Matthew would teach in the book of Matthew is the fact that, in that gospel, the fact that the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, those scribes, those people, they preached a lot and you should practice what they preached, but they didn't practice what they preached. Of course, the teachers of the law have worse punishment because they teach hypocrisy. They're even worse. So again, people like myself are more thrown into the fire because of the fact and we're talking about we're talking about that fire again. We're being that CFT. We're talking about things like um, these trials and a lot of these tribulations. Again, being born again. There's a lot of the teachings that you find alluded to in John, but people won't really say being born again is it because it, it, it's the deliverance again of the spirit. But it's also a principle of the earth being born again. It naturally happens being born again. But you won't remember, and that's probably a good thing that you don't remember. Some people plucked into the fire, some people were brought out, their brain plucked into the fire. Just refinement. A lot of what they look for is corruptibility, incorruptibility. So so the incorruptibility is, is what is the spiritual nature of the rebirth and of the uh revelation of the resurrection is incorruptibility and other things like uh Agreeable, disagreeable. So if you're agreeable, again, it's, it's really easy to convert. Disagreeable is going to be harder. You know, you're going to be very stubborn, but you'll still get it eventually. So those are the things that Elohim were looking at. So in terms of, again, going back to what you hear in John, the miraculous stuff in John, is the fact that love is a huge component to the forgiveness of sin. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life they say it's either everlasting or eternal but the, really they're the same but interchangeable because different versions and things like that but everlasting life is in you will never die of course we are, the corporeal body can die but the soul will never die we're looking at what we're talking about devourers there is a devourer that needs to be rebuked we're also talking about things like Malik things like a lot of other things like a crocodile with a lion's head you know what I'm talking about the soul I mean disattached from the body you still live as a soul you understand the soul it still lives on but the corpse is gone now with the soul again if that is devoured then it's it's done you know, even if you suffer it with the fire, we're talking about you can be pulled out, thrown back to the earth. But when you're devoured, it's over. That's the end, completely. So, gnashing of the teeth is not again. It's something that's eating the soul. That's that's eating the soul completely. So, you don't want to be in that scenario. Uh, when I say love and forgiveness, you're forgiven. And you are forgiving. You're merciful. If you are, if you're showing mercy, you have to be merciful, or, or, or vice versa, because the mercy is going to be a key component in your mercy, the mercy that you show others. Because your forgiveness is the same thing that has forgiven you. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Those are the things that you have to understand with your prayers. Now, going back to Matthew, it's more callous again. What happens to the hypocrite, what happens to the, the people that are teaching the law, but aren't following the law. So that's the that's sort of the catch-22 of it. 
you know they have a lot of power in the world but the goal now is to teach them how to love how to, how to forgive how to not be such those hypocrisy that that is dangerous because now it shows what's in the heart in my heart you know you, if you had slander I'd right, slander those types of things but now we're looking at 2021 we're saying to ourselves the path you know we're following now is to say that who do we want to be who do we want to become so a lot of the things that we attack a lot of the people that we attack we have to realize that they're us either in the future or in the past but 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 the idea now is to go from that that spirit of attack those those types of things because you don't know what you think you know sometimes again we think we're in a relationship with God we think we're in a relationship with other people but that, the facts are we created it in our minds but we didn't really know them we didn't really know who we were or who they were so we don't know God if we don't know each other so know each other a little bit better and you shall know God so now like I say we're going to wait to prepare we to be patient even more than being patient being hopeful being hopeful that things will get better so things will get better eventually you got to be hopeful you know what I'm saying Love, faith, hope from Corinthians, but a lot of it again is just carrying over to to where. Where you want to go. You want to be seated at the table. You know, with the men of great renown, men and women of great renown, you know, kings, priests, a lot of other people. Again, you're looking at in Matthew is explaining to you that Jesus was saying that a lot of the people who are first are going to have to be kicked out. They basically have to go redo it again. Not, not just go to Great Reuben Esther and see. They probably have to go back to earth to live it up again. Because a lot of the things they did, taking it by force, you know, the violent, they had to be, you know, reevaluated. You know, some, some people could have done some things that are biblical earlier on, but they had to, God had to say, well, but you, you know, kid a lot of people so you have to go back you have to live this other cycle you have to be less harsh you, know, you have to love loving people so that's that's the goal of of the Bible is just to say they'll have to do it again you know the first has to be last the last has to be first just to live those cycles so you've been here before and thankfully you don't remember any of them that'd be way scarier but overall it's the fact that it's, it's probably the people who, who probably work the least, you know, who just joined on. No matter trying to say is that it, the gospel inside the gospel, what Jesus is trying to say through that gospel. You see, again, he gives these apostles, he gives them a different perspective of himself. They know different parts of him. Matthew knows a different part. Philip knows a different part. Um, Philip knows a different part. Uh, I want to say um, John knows a different part. Uh, Nicodemus knows a different part. You have, uh, I, well, I was a little later, but uh, Thomas knows a different part. So based, based, based off of their faith, again, we know this down, Downing Thomas. We know also the Gospel of Thomas, a little bit of other things like that. But their nature of what they could hear, what they could understand, what the Spirit was saying to the church, what was saying to the church inside of them, their spirit, what it was saying, what they could capture, what they could gather, that's what they got. That's their perspective. That's what things that they could change, things they couldn't change. And they had all they had all of it. Because you're looking at God from one perspective in one region, you're never gonna see the all. You're never gonna see all that he is. So he's everywhere. But not to say that in itself a page is a book, but a book has pages. So the things that are a part of the all are not the all. So looking at the life in these trees, everything like that. He could see people from a tree. He could see through the all because he's omnipresent. He can go into where he wants to go, anywhere, through that all. That's omnipresence. So you're looking at who Jesus is. He wasn't just a man. He is God right now. He is the all right now. 
but in the corporeal body, again, he's risen. He's the risen king. There's a lot of things to understand. Be everything in every region, you know. But when it talks about a lot of these other events to happen, a lot of these other events to come, you know, they are just preparation for the finale, of course. But there's been end of days pretty much everywhere, you know. In every region there's been end of these civilizations. But loving one another is the is, is the best way to say all the commandments. What else can I say? Those Ten Commandments pretty much are encompassed on loving the Father. To love the Son, same thing. The Holy Spirit, it's each other. You might not see it, but what God is inside of you. That's the, that's the well of living water. That's the bread of life. Those are the things that are with us. Those are the things that we, that we speak to every day. That's the life that you bear. So, without having to explain myself in every video, I just want to say that well, God's got all of you. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that you've experienced, a lot of traumas, abuses, things of that nature where you're saying, there's no way God has gotten you. Nope, you don't trust it because you have every right to not fully trust because now you'll be shown the favor and grace of God through another human being. That's gonna and that's gonna take some time, you know. It might, it might not come quickly, but it's something that God is preparing for you. He's preparing a house for you, He's preparing a place for you. That you just need to trust Him. But it's not gonna be easy for some of you because you've you've endured a lot, a lot of abuse, a lot of trials, a lot of tribulation, a lot of things that people would misunderstand. They wouldn't believe, but God believes you, and His prophets do. Those who come in His name, so. Those are those things where you have to say, there's some un unbelievable things that have happened in your life where you say, no way God has got me, but now I need you to fill your mind in this coming year and say, God has got me. Because it's not your it's not your negative thoughts. It is the prince of this world. It's a lot of other things, a lot of other forces going into your mind. But you got to say, no, he's not in my mind any longer. The devil has no power in my mind anymore. So, how this operates, what you're going to say is, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. He has delivered me from the power of death and ransomed from the grave into life eternal. My mind is renewed. But you don't have to say those very words if you don't want to, but the fact of the matter is, People think, you know, they can control the world, have it all under control, but even with kingship, lordship, whatever it is, man, it's going to be difficult, you know? Were there any easy outs? Probably not, but you know this, God has got you. Well, he never leave you, never forsake you. This depends on the mission. If his mission is to forsake you, if God wanted to forsake you, he could, but he won't because he wants to protect you. For the most part. But whatever he says again. We're, we're looking at. Who the almighty is. We're going to talk about. All those other Elohim. But most high again. We're going to go talk about those a little bit later. So again keep continue watching. John Matthew. Keep reading John and Matthew. And that's going to be the contrast. Those are the two types of contrast. For the Christian uh, sects. Really the, the Baptists. Are a lot of them reading from John but the Matthew is, is for the is for the Jewish Christians it's for the converts if you're going to convert the Jew to become a Christian or maybe a, a messianic Christian you show the Matthew but John John is like high spirituality when I, when I want to talk about John you have to know many so many things about about life John is annoyed that that thing is annoyed so again if, you, if you're wondering why there's such a great contrast, is because of two different perspectives. We have two different perspectives on the same God. And that's what's going to really, might carry you into guilt, more shame, more hurt, more pain. If you keep repeating these cycles of who you think, who you think God is, it might ruin the perspective of reality itself. 
So keep seeing his seeing him as a merciful, everlasting, forgiving father. Because that's what he does. He forgives as you should forgive. If you are unforgiving, you're going to feel that guilt, that shame, that pain. If I felt that shame, that pain is because you know, you're not loving yourself properly. And you fail the commandments. So I need to love myself better for really to make a lot of people understand that love comes from God. And it's the power that, that God puts in you. That's the power that is going to defeat death. But it would take time. Patience and forgiveness. Looking at, okay, now we're talking about the week. The capital. Yeah, I mean, just don't be at the wrong place at the wrong time, you know. It's just, it's not really becoming behavior of any Christian, right? Black type of behavior, so. Just don't be at the, that place, you know. Right? Don't be any places where there's a gathering, like a grass. I don't care who you are, black, white, brown, don't, don't do it. It's not just it's not justified by the law, so don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. So overall I mean things like that happen because of what's going on up there, down here. The controllers. But don't fall for the enemy's tricks, you know, don't be at the again, don't be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You where you're supposed to be. Yeah. That's what's more important. So again everybody. God bless, stay safe. Alright. See you later. Love you all. Bye.